G'day guys, welcome back to the Dylan Friends Podcast. This week, another big guest with a very important topic. It's Dr. Zach Seidler. Um, Zach came on the podcast a few months ago. If you didn't hear it, uh, Zach is the Global Director of Mental Health Training at Movember. And I thought, look, going back into lockdown again, there's no better time to just check on ourselves, our friends and family, make sure we're all travelling all right and got some good things in place to, to support each other through a tough time. Um, we do cover some things in this podcast that may be distressing for some for some people. So please, if that is you, make sure you check out the links in, in the show notes for some extra support. I got a lot out of talking to Zach um, throughout this show, so hopefully you can get something out of it. Um, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Also, guys, a massive thank you to three special fans, James Spanbroke, Callum Chisholm and Tanner Quattrochi. Thank you so much for your love and support um, over the last few weeks. It means a lot. Uh, guys, also, if you can do a massive favour and subscribe to the channel, if you enjoy it, um, it'll also help help you with notifications when new shows come out. And also, guys, last but not least, uh, if there is someone that you know that is struggling over this time, maybe share this podcast with them and hopefully it can help in some way. Dr. Zach Seidler, welcome back to the Dylan Friends podcast, my friend. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's always a pleasure to have you on again and uh, we chatted off air and I'd love to get you on as a, as a contributor and it's a, it's a very fitting time to have you back on the show. Second time lucky, eh? Let's, let, let's yeah. hope I can. Uh, You've you got to better it. I like, I like the, <laughs> the chance to, for a redo, if nothing else. Exactly. I didn't want to say, but last time just didn't hit the mark, and um, <laughs> yeah, I got I got you back on just to give you one more chance. But no, in all seriousness, mate, it's um, it's an honour to have you back on. You've uh, you've really stepped up your game as is the podcast. So I thought it was very fitting to get you back on. You've you're writing articles now in the Herald Sun. You're everywhere in the media. So um, congratulations on that. But it's probably probably for another cause as well. It's probably because some things have sort of been happening lately that aren't aren't ideal. Mm, for sure. Well, I've I've been saying that. I'm pretty lucky there's a, there's a silver lining here and that I'm busy as I've ever been. But the sad thing is, is that I get busy when the shit hits the fan. So um, I'm just trying to, trying to roll with that and um, find opportunities to, to give as much as I can while also, I guess, what we'll talk about today is, is looking after ourselves because it's, it's rough when you put a lot of expectations on yourself as well to try and live up to the expectation. Um, and you know, writing and talking and doing all this stuff has been awesome. Um, but there's there's some real difficulties going on out there that you know we need to we need to try to to help people with. Yeah, of course, mate. And for anyone else who is uh, is listening out there that didn't check into our chat, we had a chat about eight weeks ago. Um, about some really cool stuff. Pretty similar time um, when we you know Victorians have gone back into lockdown now. But it was probably at the start of the last lockdown where we just sort of. Thought it'd be good to check on um, on things and check on everyone. And um, I think now is, again, as we said, another fitting time. But I think um, chatting to you post that, um, the feedback that we both got was was incredible. Um, I was overwhelmed with so many people reaching out and how much they said that just something like that had helped. Um, and I said to myself, I didn't want it to be something that, you know, I tick the box and then we move on. Um, as, as chatted to you, mate, I think mental health is one of those things that it's a consistent thing. Um, nothing much changes in the fact that the messages are always very similar. Um, but I suppose today is just another little refresher and some things that we might not have touched on last time to, to go through. I can't believe that was eight weeks ago. Look at my beard growth since then. But the, th- the thing I, that... Uh, I didn't think that could get much thicker, to be honest. I appreciate that. <laughs> it's, all, it's all hair plugs, don't worry. The, um, the thing that's, that's kind of stuck with me, I guess, is that um, I've been talking a lot to people around like, being a carer for someone who's got a mental health issue. And whereas if someone's got cancer, for instance, and they're they're going through chemo, there's like a a start and an end point, you know, and there's like a a pretty clear trajectory about how things are going to go. But if you've got a mate or or a loved one who's suffering from anxiety or depression, the ups and downs are just insane. It's like, you know, you never know what you're going to get really. And so um, that's kind of what COVID has done to everyone. It's been the ups and downs, the roller coaster, And so, I guess before we begin, I just want to um, tell everyone that they're doing just fine, however they're doing, um, and that you just got to ride the wave. Um, and the unpredictability and un- the uncertainty is massively overwhelming. But trying to fight it is just going to hurt even more. Yeah, for sure. I think it's a it's a position that we've never found ourselves in before. And um, yeah, to think that you're going to get through this sort of unscathed, you probably there's, there's always going to be times that are challenging, um, myself included, which will. 
we'll get into later. But um, mate, something I, I really wanted to ask you about, if, if you're okay with, is last time I totally forgot to um to talk to you about your journey, I suppose, just to the start, to, to see how you got to where you were. Obviously, um, Global Director of Mental Health Training at Movember is a very fancy name, as we touched on, but there's got to be probably a backstory to how you, you got there and why you're passionate about mental health. Mm, for sure. I think we've all, we've all got one one way or another. Um, mine is, is actually, it's pretty timely, actually. Tomorrow is going to be seven years since my dad took his own life. Um, and that's, that's kind of um, not, I guess, the reason I'm in it, but it is my motivation, I guess, in many ways. Um, and so it's, it's what drives me. I was already becoming a psychologist. I was already on the road to it, but whether or not I was going to do, you know, men's mental health specifically, I'm not really sure. Um, and then having my dad, who was, you know, my inspiration, he was a doctor, he was a bloody champion. And um, to see someone that strong, that, um, you know, seemingly stable, I guess, um, break down really in front of your eyes, um, shakes your worldview, I guess. And I, and I, it became pretty clear to me that um, things aren't always as they seem, especially with, with men. And so, that's kind of what's driven me to understand why men act the way that they do when they get into tough spots and what they need um, really to look after themselves and, and to make it a, an easier, softer, lighter, more peaceful journey, I guess, one way or another moving, moving forward. Um, yeah. But that's, that's my story. Thanks for asking Dil. No, it's, that's in, that's incredible, mate. I, uh, I actually had, I uh, didn't know that. And um, I thank you so much for, Feeling comfortable enough to tell it because it is such a such a hard thing to talk about. But I suppose you're obviously doing um, doing a lot now to combat that. And obviously, your old man would be super proud of of what you're up to at the moment, mate, because you're doing some great things. Um, I suppose the next sort of um, the way I want to sort of conduct today, and always happy for you to just throw in where you are, mate, because you're the expert. I just um, like to talk a lot. Um, we touched on it earlier, but at the moment, obviously, COVID. Um, it's been tough. Like it's 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 been really tough for for so many Australians, um, not just men, um, obviously women as well. But I suppose um, I don't want to get political because I don't know anything about politics. But obviously at the moment there's been a lot of um, information getting around, probably misinformation as well um, on mental health and and what's actually happening with that in Australia at the moment. Obviously COVID's happening and that's a that's a disease. It's a it's something that's attracting people to to get sick. But obviously the mental side of things, which we don't really report on because it's not allowed. I'm not sure if it's actually not allowed, but I don't know if people don't do it. But obviously there has been a lot of um, incidents with mental health at the moment, but there's probably been a few stats that aren't there. Are you able to sort of divulge on what's actually been happening? Have we seen a rise in things at the moment? For sure. So I don't know if anyone's seen, um, I posted about this a few days ago, but everyone's been been posting this, this um, note on Instagram um, that... It was like, you know, since COVID began, this many uh, deaths have happened as a result of COVID, but this many suicides have taken place. And, um, you know, call your mates, check in, blah, blah, blah. Um, there, there are no statistics out at the moment around the suicide rate this year. Um, and so while there are probably projections that are coming out all over the place, and there are a few really preliminary findings um, that show that Lifeline um, you know, use has been going through the roof. Um, Beyond Blue callers have, have um, you know, really ramped up. There's also domestic violence um, cases that are, that are, you know, going through the roof as well. There's no hard stats um, where that thousand uh, people who have, who have suicided comes from. Um, that, that stuff comes out from the Australian Bureau of Statistics much later in the year. So um, I think that we need to be cautious, as you said, this stuff can can trigger people. There's you know there's a thing of of contagion, suicide contagion, which is to say that if you really talk about um, suicide in a certain way or prematurely, um, it can trigger angst in people um, and actually work in the opposite direction of what you intended. So we've got to be careful with that stuff. Everyone wants to help. Let's be clear. We love the message. Um, we just need to be careful about um, making sure that we've got the stats right before we start to spread them i guess yeah for sure mate for sure um which probably bleeds to another point that we spoke about last time and again like this this podcast will probably be repetitive but as we said it's about just like bettering our knowledge and i already feel like since last time we chatted it sparked so many conversations for me 
out of that and I got better at being able to have conversations with other people. Um, but again, it's something that we continually need to check in and, and do. One thing that I came across actually with Movember um, was an awesome um, thing called conversations that Movember has. So basically the hardest part about mental health sometimes is, is we all want to check in our mates. We all, we all love talking to our mates and checking on them, seeing how they are. But the actual conversation in how to do that and how they'll best react and what the scenario is, is it, you know, what's it related to? Is it a home thing? Is it they're struggling at work? Or is it maybe something they're, they're doing that isn't good for them? Um, that's probably the hard part to, to really come to. But I think something that would be cool to talk about, I suppose, from your point of view and, and the organisation that you work with, obviously, Movember, is the conversations um, aspect on the website that actually talks you through how to approach people. Um, and I think it's such an awesome skill um, to be able to teach people how to do that. You're my hype man. Thanks for the promo. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the, the, the tool is called Movember Conversations and um, it's like an online interactive um, conversation starter. And the whole thing is that you might not have the words, but we do in a way. And so we, we kind of um, give you a couple scenarios um, that are really coolly like drawn out and they, they give you options about how to um, jump in and, and speak to a guy in your life uh, that you might not have the words to, to really push through and get past that discomfort or awkwardness that often happens at the start and um, really lean in and have that conversation that is going to potentially save a life, I guess, in many ways. I want to be clear, though, that the idea that those types of conversations need to be the heavy, you know, are you suicidal or, you know, have you yeah. thought of, sort of it, it, that's just bullshit. You know, I'm a psychologist and I don't even do that very often. What I do is I go, oh, mate, you told me last week that the bills are piling up. How's that going? That's, that's an in. The in yeah. is like, oh, you told me your kids are being a little shit. So what, what, you know, what are you going to do about it? It's like, how can we find a way for them to express whatever's going on in their life, a way for them to express the emotion that's happening without making it a mental health conversation? Because... Yeah everyday life situations are actually the, the largest risk factors for male suicide. We've got unemployment, financial distress, relationship breakdown, that type of stuff we see every day in our mates. It's everywhere. And we don't look at that as like a risky thing. We just look at it as, oh, that's life. But in fact, that's the stuff that actually pushes guys over the edge. So check in about those things. And what we do is we use the ALEC model, which is ask, listen, encourage action, and check in. Just remember Alec Baldwin on your little on your on your shoulder. He's just, he's just yapping away as Donald Trump. But it's really the idea of like, don't try and fix the problem. Just be there consistently. Ask in a really open-ended manner. And I guess when it comes to like, how do I have those words? What am I actually going to do to to make that meaningful conversation? It's a matter of just going, how am I going to connect with this guy on a level that we normally do don't make it something different it doesn't need to be a totally different conversation it needs to be something that is familiar to them in the time and a place that works for them and then you need to come back you don't say i'll chat to you in a month you go i'll see you on wednesday at the same time exactly man. and that was a point i suppose of checking back in with you because i thought as we said earlier i didn't want this to just be something that people think okay that's a box tick let's think about it now nah, but it's something that you def definitely have to revisit because it's so easy to forget about sometimes and I'll, I'll get to that later. But one thing I do want to do, mate, is, and I know you are the, the, the king of this, I want to do some role play, okay? I want, okay, I want to pretend... The king of role play, I'll take that. Almost, um, I, I want you to give me some good ins, okay? So I'll be someone maybe that you need, you, you're not worried about, but you just want to check up on. Because I think the hardest part about checking on our mates isn't actually, everyone's got the will to do it, but it's sort of how to actually go about it. Um, obviously, again, we spoke about conversations, but I'd love to just see the real master at work. Um, <laughs> no pressure. And see some, see some good little um, calls. All right. Well, can you give me a bit of a backstory? Am I, okay. am I allowed yeah, to know sure. anything that's going on? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, the backstory is um, I've just been super stressed with COVID um, and financials is, is just weighing up on me at the moment, which, which everyone's in the same boat. Um, everyone's got to pay bills. And I suppose just that uncertainty of what's what's happening and what's going to happen in the future. So I'd start, Dill, man, you messaged me a couple of days ago and said that, um, you know, things have been pretty tough. Um, I'm just going to dive in and question what exactly were you talking about, you reckon? Yeah, yeah, well, uh, 
Well, you've already got me. I'm an open book, so I'd like to. <laughs> no, I chose exactly right. Will you marry um, me? Yeah, exactly. Well, that it's probably just the the information starter, I suppose. Exactly that at the start of of actually just going in and saying the question, identifying. I think we actually. The role play, we probably don't need to get into because you answered all the questions in there. I just had that down because I wanted to probably see your best one-liner, um, which was great. But, <laughs> again, the conversation at Movember is, is there to, to, to go with that. Yeah. Um, and I think, sure. I think something that's, that I, I reckon is really important to remember is it's so easy to forget that they're your mate when you're having these conversations. When you're, like, amping up to go and be like, oh, I need to check in on him. You just, you take on like a new persona for some reason. Mm. And I reckon the really important thing is to just be like, remind yourself, he's the guy that I've known for however long. I care about him. And so I can push past whatever's going on and just talk to him like I normally do, you know? And um, really just stressing that you care. And the one thing that I really want everyone to remember is that this isn't a one, you know, one way street it has to be a shared modeling of, of vulnerability or, or emotion, whatever it is. So it's like, yeah. if I'm checking in on you, as you did at the start, checking in on me, sharing your own crap that's going on so that I can feel comfortable. Cause that's the idea that, that men really struggle with. It's like, Oh, he's, he wants me to share everything with him, but he's not giving anything. And so I'm just going to burden him if I tell him what's going on. Um, and we don't want that. We want it to be like a, a pretty reciprocal relationship. Sure. And we talk about our mates in that as well. And it's easier to talk to our mates. I think it's easier to talk to our mates about that sort of thing. Um, something that, again, and it's probably fitting as well in, in your circumstance, um, which, are, which we really appreciate you opening up earlier about, but talking to someone like our old bands or if uncles, um, I think that that's probably something that's really challenging because they probably haven't grown up with that, you know, comfortableness of being able to, be able to sort of talk about those sort of things as much as, you know, we have. And I suppose now, especially like the, their interaction wouldn't be as much as what it would be because they're not seeing their mates. They don't really go on social media as much. Um, they might not be checking in with their kids because they're not allowed to see them. How can we look after the older people in our lives? And, and to be honest with you, like the, you know, 44 to 55 year old, 60, 60 year old guys are, are in the greatest risk group because as they age, they tend to actually lose social connections. And, and I remember we ran a survey um, a couple of years ago that showed that it was like 25% of guys had one or no one to talk to in their lives. And that's just like, it rips at me, you know? It's so sad to know that as, as women age, they hold on, if not gain social connections. And for some reason, as guys age, their mates fall away. And so I think to the young guys out there, really paying attention to your friendships, putting time and effort into them because they will save your life in the long term, seriously. Um, but that aside, older guys, it's, it's rough, man. It's, it's really difficult to have the conversations, especially with like a dad or an uncle where there's like a power dynamic situation as well. Um, and they'll fob you off. They, you know, my dad did it all the time. I'm fine. It's sweet. Don't worry. You know, you're my kid type thing. Um, but I guess the, the key is, is consistency there, um, is to not go away. <laughs> um, because really, that is the only thing that's going to get them um, to, to understand that this is not something that you're taking lightly. Um, and so really, the key is to, to take them to a place, you know, where they're going to be comfortable and um, asking them what not only what's going on, but what can be done, if anything, that you've noticed has changed and, and what can be done um, to, to try and fix that and how you can help. Um, because it, it really is a matter of like showing that there is a team around them. You know what I mean? Because what depression and anxiety and all mental health disorders really do is they strip a person of feelings of control, of, of power, of strength, and they just bring in this deep sense of failure. And um, what that does is ostracize people. It isolates them. It makes them want to just hole up in a, in a cave and not talk to anyone. And so you need to go and open up the door and let the light in and just go, no, nah, fuck this. We're not, we're not allowing this to happen. It's like, you, you know, you need, to, you need to be relentless. And I've always said, I'm, I'm Dr. Relentless. I just, when it comes to my patients, when it comes to my mates, I am just constant in the way that I approach this stuff because they will say, I'm sweet. I'm sweet. And on the third time they'll start crying. 
Mm. So keep going. Yeah, that's huge, mate. It's definitely something that we can all improve on, I suppose. Um, like you said, the, the, the older guys in, in my life is, is for sure. Um, I could be checking on them much more. Um, that's something that we really hit me between the eyes last time we, we spoke and has been a massive eye-opener for myself. Um, I don't, you know, and I can't speak for everyone, but I feel like it definitely is, is the, the self-stigma. Like we spoke about last time, um, you know, the mental health stigma, and you said, mate, there is no mental health stigma anymore. Like everyone's accepted of mental health, you know, like we feel like it's a really broad aspect. Everyone can talk about it. Everyone's happy to go and help their mate. Everyone's happy to go and do whatever. But when it comes to yourself, you just think you're fine. Um, and I suppose even for that, for me, like I like have just had still times where like last week, for example, um, you know, I was, I was just thinking about, you know, the podcast and just working and man, I was so fucking run down. Like I was like working, like I've never worked before. Like, especially, you know, I wasn't like, I was happy. Like there, was, there wasn't anything sad. I was loving having work on, but I was literally just like getting up, doing this till at, at night on my phone, still working, wake up straight into it. And it was just getting exhausting. Like I was so fucking tired. Like I was so tired. And still at this time, you know, I was thinking about my friends, thinking about this. And it actually took for like my fiance to be like, hey, like you're this guy that you fucking preach all this stuff about mental health and looking after yourself, but you like absolutely throwing yourself into the ground. Like that's not okay. And it really hit me and I was just like, fuck, I've done it again. Like I've done it again. And it took for her to like pull that out. Like we had to have, I had a couple of days off. I just like turned my phone off, you know, logged out of my social media for the weekend, felt so much better. But I was like, I was just so thankful that I had her to pull that out because I don't know if I would have been able to if I didn't have someone to help me. Mm, for sure. And I think that that's kind of, especially for, for us who talk about this stuff, who, who experience it, who, you know, share it all the time. We kind of think we're immune somewhere, <laughs> somewhere or another. Or we just reckon um, that we can just keep going because other people have it worse. That's really what I think COVID is doing, especially. I've spoken to some mates who are like in one bedroom apartments in fucking freezing Melbourne. They can't go out and see anyone. They're, you know, avid exercises. They can't go to gym. Everything is, is real rough for them. And I still call them and they're like, nah, man, it could be worse. And I'm like, of course it could be fucking worse, but it doesn't mean <laughs> that you're not struggling. And that thing is, is the thing that will continue to, is exactly what you did. You just go, I just got to keep going because mm. that's the only way. And, and you need to, and you're lucky that you've got someone in your life who can call you on that. But we need to build up that natural instinct within ourselves to just go, damn, I've hit the wall. And, um, you know, I've been, I'm in a very similar position. I've just been completely burnt out. Um, and thankfully I'm taking leave tomorrow and <laughs> it's, this is my, uh, my final call. You're, you're the end. <laughs> you're going to get my best performance here. Um, the, the final 1%. But I think that it's, it's really that moment to just go, can I actually look after the people that I want to? Can I do this podcast? Can I, you know, express my feelings, whatever it is, um, appropriately, if I'm just running myself into the ground? And the answer is always no. Yeah. No, 100%. It's a good point. I think even from... From that, like, from our last chat, as soon as, you know, she said that, it really hit me. I was like, oh, man, you're so right. Like, I chatted to Zach about this. Like, we, we said this, you know, self-stigma stuff. And I was like, I'm preaching all this stuff, but still don't even do it myself. So we put a few things into play for sure. And, um, and yeah, we, we went to, like, every morning now, we'd, I think it was just about getting back into a routine for me. Like, because I think that that's, like, something huge. Like, going for, like, when I go for a walk, we go for a walk every morning. Just like not taking my phone. I, I leave that in the car um, and trying to get off my phone as much as I can. Because like I, embarrassingly like enough, I have I think I have a full addiction to my phone. And it's not just social media. It's just, it's a comfort thing. Like I'll just be on it, um, if, whether it's just like calling people. Um, you know, like I always just in the car, I have to be on the phone talking to someone. Like there's not many times where I don't have my brain just sitting by itself. Um, so like letting that probably get away from that for a walk in the morning. It's amazing how much you can actually think about if you don't have your phone and looking at it. You're just thinking about your day and setting things up. Um, I found that's been really helpful. And then even something else I've been really getting into and COVID's always helped me with this, but just getting into a good fitness routine now. Like I've been running, you know, three times a week, but I bought a watch that I can listen to music, but I don't have my phone attached to it. Mm. So like I can leave that in the car 
Um, so they're two things that like I sort of put into place that like have definitely, definitely helped me a lot. For sure. And I reckon the, um, you need to go to like a phone rehab clinic, but the, uh, the, the I, I think they exist in South Korea, but um, <laughs> I think <laughs> we'll just send you off to Seoul. I think um, that, you know, that's really, man, I, I can, f if I hear like a, a ding somewhere in the background, my brain is just like, something's happening and I need to respond to it immediately. So that, that addiction, it's like a dopamine click that happens. So it's really common. And, and I guess you just have to wane yourself off it slowly, sorry, wean yourself off it slowly, but surely. Um, but the key is what, what you said before, and we discussed this last time as well, is that you, you'd fallen off the routine. And the most important thing as we always said is to not shit on yourself if you do, but find a way back. Um, because if you, if you start to rip on yourself, when you break a routine for a day or two, that routine then gets matched with the negative valence or emotion. And so it then becomes something you actually don't want to do because you've criticized yourself for not doing it. Does that make mm. sense? So yep. you're much less likely to do it moving forward versus as we discussed, if you are going for runs and then you miss a run, just going, it happens. It's fine. I'm going to get back on it tomorrow rather than fuck deal. What's wrong with you? Why can't you? And if you do that, then it gets matched together with all that negative criticism and you're much less likely to do it again. Yeah. Super point. It's a super point. I suppose that even comes back to, again, we're repeating ourselves, but structuring our days like is a massive one. And I've fallen away from that a few times, but being able to just bring it back to, to things. And like you said, not getting too down on yourself. Um, mate, the biggest thing for me, like I literally forget to eat breakfast every day. So like every day I'll get to me and it got to me at about two o'clock today. Like I have a coffee in the morning and I'm like, fuck, I haven't even fucking eaten. Like that is not normal. You know, like, especially in a time like this, because historically I played footy for eight years. I'd wake up, go to training, eat breakfast at training, train, eat lunch at training, come home and then eat dinner with my missus. So I had to like, like literally at the moment, I've just realized that like, I've never been in this situation of living out of home and not eating breakfast. It's been, it's like, you it sounds it stupid, you? but it's been crazy. Right. Oh, I was a superstar. Oh yeah. 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 Like <laughs> word on the street. YouTube keeps telling me for some reason. Um, I, I just keep getting Dill, Dill, um, fan, fan videos. That's, that's yeah. my, um, just my list. It's just <laughs> following me. Um, you've got your phone, use it to your advantage. Alarm the shit out of your life. Mm. that's that's the key it's like i've got meditation alarms i've got um lunch alarms if if you can't get into the cycle on your own bing yourself until you get there um because uh the food situation lots of people do like that intermittent fasting stuff if i don't have my muesli and banana before 9 a.m all hell will break loose so um, I, I think that you need to consider the fact that your blood sugar is like through the floor and you're much less likely to have irritable, you know, mood mm. if you're not eating early in the morning. You need, you need that, that sugar hit. You need the carbs, you, you know, especially if you're doing exercise as well. And if you're a naturally anxious person, you're going to be churning through that stuff. Yeah, definitely. No, it's, it's something I've definitely got to do. It's, it's, um, I just don't know how I keep forgetting it. Hey, goal setting is something that we spoke about last time as well, but I love this side of it because I felt like I was – Literally nearly last COVID, as bad as this sounds and as weird as this sounds, it was the most productive time of my life because I think that I probably used it really well. And I think we spoke about, like, let's actually flip the script here and use this as a positive. Like, everything that you've been trying to do, like, you've, you, you might want to start a business, you might want to start something. Like, this could be, honestly, the best time to do that. Um, so many creative things have come at this time because we don't have anything else to think about. There's no parties that we can go to. Um, it's such a such a massive time. So I think goal setting, if you've got something that you put off last time, this is the time to go through and really smash it out. It's cute that you said last COVID. Yeah, I know. It's, the other I one, COVID-18. I miss it. I miss it. Um, the, yeah, the, let's, let's be honest here. We need to, you know, you need to talk as it is. It's like lockdown fatigue is a thing. Um, it's going to get to everybody and expecting yourself to now be able to again you pull out the puzzles and finish a 5,000 piece puzzle and start a business and you know fix all your relationships with your kids etc just chill out everyone needs to, to relax I think having a really clear ritual goal 
that you want to achieve that is not going to be taxing and extremely challenging for you, um, but will be really fulfilling and give you a sense of progress is probably the way forward. And trying to do what you were doing, which is like, I'm going to be fit. I'm going to kill this podcast. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Most people don't have the energy for that right now. And so I think that it's a matter of going, what's one thing that I can really put my leftover energy into that's going to make me feel good, that's not going to be overly challenging and that I can just be all right with giving a go. Um, Because I agree, you know, there is still silver lining situation here. It's it's much thinner than it probably was the first time around. Mm. Um, But there's there's still an opportunity um, to do things that you weren't able to do, you know, last time maybe. So give it a go again. What do you got to lose? In terms of as well, I suppose, connectiveness, um, and we spoke about this, I suppose just earlier, but in terms of staying connected in a time like this, it is it is hard, especially Victorians at the moment. Um, what's something I suppose you see is the best time? Like I remember last time, last COVID we were in, I was on Zoom every night with my mates. It was sort of that novelty of um, FaceTiming, having you know a few beers over this um, house party was all the rage. All these things were were massive. I feel like this time around though, everyone's just totally given up on that, and it's just mm. a little bit probably over it already. Yeah, it was zonked. Yeah, house party's dead. That was quick. <laughs> well, that was scamming us <laughs> as well. I'm pretty sure yeah, that was scamming like, yeah. Stealing my data. Um, the, the, um, I guess the key is rather than doing what we did last time, which was like, I'm all in. Let's, um, let's do it every night. Let's, you know, we're going to have drinks. We're going to, I think you just need to chill and pull back and just go, what is really important to me? Who is really important to me? And how can I do it consistently? Um, and who do I need to check in with consistently? Um, firstly, phone calls should not be forgotten. We don't need face-to-face all the time. You know, it's so much nicer to just do a walk and walk and talk, for instance, with a mask on. But um, I think that, uh, you know, just just calling people and, and potentially, I don't know, I've been, you know, watching the footy with mates and having it on loudspeaker and we're just banter and, and ripping on each other. That's been useful. Um, and then, you know, lots of people were doing heaps of gaming. I don't know if that's fallen off as well um but i reckon it is really a matter of going what i've been doing at least is being like six o'clock wednesday night boys come on down let's go and so it's like all right that's the time that's all we got so we're going to go for that and if there's anything around it then that's fine but at least i'm consistent there yeah for sure i think something that i've sort of learned from this time as well like you said it doesn't have to be necessarily the drinks um and whatnot but we've my mate, uh, my friendship group um, with two mates, we've started a bit of a, a group where, as I said earlier, we're running three times a week. Um, we're keeping each other accountable to it, um, sending in all our data, uploading to Strava and whatnot. So I think there's that, that form of like accountability there in terms of just getting something done throughout the week. Whereas I suppose at a time like this, you can really hide away and no one will know what you're doing. But to sort of put yourself in front of your friends and say, hey, this is what I'm doing. Now you're aware of it. Can you hold me account to it? Um, is something that is, is a big one. So maybe a challenge to anyone listening, if you, if you can set up something like that with your friends and happy to do it, it doesn't have to be anything fitness related. It could be trying to eat healthy for a month. It could be um, something along the lines of anything that you guys are into. But I think that that could be something that is really good because it just has that more of an accountability of something and m- makes you more aware and the connectiveness of, of your friends. Yeah, I reckon that's a, that's a good idea. And being, being aware, I guess, if someone has slipped off the radar, as you just said, it's really easy to, for people to just, you know, slowly pull away at this time. So if you've noticed that any of your mates have suddenly gone silent or are not um, connecting as usual or their texts are shorter or not as, not as um, you know, reliable, I guess, really pushing to connect with them. It'll make you feel good and, and, and it'll make them feel like someone is actually out there thinking about them. Sure, man. Um- Mate, it's been it's been good. I think we've covered most things that that we wanted to get through today. Um, the action points, I suppose, that going forward again, as much as we want to keep this consistent every few months or so, but check in with check in with your mates, um, especially guys that you maybe haven't heard from in a while. But obviously, as well, um, sometimes that has nothing to do with anything. It could be the guy that's the most you know the joker of the group or or anything like that, just make sure they're all, they're all good, sending, sending out a, a group text to your mates, probably in, like send it out individually, but just sort of a broad message I think is something that I'm going to be definitely doing over the next few days. Um, a massive one for me, and I, I hope that I'm not alone in this, but 
getting off your phone, like having some time um, of the day where you just don't have that with you. And I think like the morning's a beautiful time just to just go for a walk and smash that out, like get off your phone. I've definitely, even just over the last few days, felt like that's that's huge for me. Um, setting a goal, whether that be, you know, fitness, study or or business side, um, having something that a little carrot in front of there just to just to act towards um, is something that is something that I'm really keen on doing and I feel that it's it's definitely just keeping it it front of mind all the time and having something there. Um, and then that obviously the structure of your day and keeping it consistent. How did I go? Did I did I smack it? Mate, you want a PhD? You're done. Can't be too Easy. hard. No, no, no. <laughs> they hand them out like candy. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um last Stop time as well deal. that'll be you, that'll be a podcast yeah that should be last time as well you were saying um which i don't believe this because i don't feel like you're big enough or strong enough to do this but you were doing some sort of push-up challenge have you got anything else to maybe have a challenge to set out to everyone I, i've set one out to to tech start with some of your mates and make sure we check in but um and especially that as we said earlier as well not just your mates but the older older gentlemen in our lives um because they can be ones that are really really um yeah quiet in these scenarios but what else mate is there anything else that we can leave with just to to um send off for sure um there's, there's a few things I, the, the, the thousand push-up challenge is the bane of my existence after i said that on here god i got messages every day being like man i crushed it i was like great now you've made me feel like shit thanks for that <laughs> Um, so everyone go out and give that a go again, I guess. Why not? If, if you didn't get, get around to it the first time, but, um, the, the thing that I've been trying to do is, um, based on like positive psychology, which is the gratefulness stuff, um, yeah. gratitude. Um, and we, we spoke about it a bit last time, but I guess what I've been doing is before bed, I think of three things that happened during the day that I'm you know grateful for. And then what I do is I go, why did they happen? I go, why, why did they happen? Because rather than just being like, I'm grateful for my friends and my family and my health or something, I go, all right, I got to do this podcast with Dill today. For instance, this is what I'll probably do tonight. I got to do this cool podcast with Dill um, that I really enjoyed. I'm grateful for having that opportunity. And then I've got to go, why did that happen? And the reason that it happened is because we climbed the fucking Harbour Bridge together and we <laughs> built up a friendship and then... You happened to have been through some shit. I've happened to be through some shit and we, we connected and then we both put in the, the work um, and we care about this stuff. Um, and that's why we're here, I guess. And that gives you before bed, at least a pretty good sense of um, awareness about why you do what you do. Um, it gives you a bit of purpose for the next day as well. So give it a go. I love it, mate. We actually had, um, as well as your chat last time, we touched on the gratitude again with Hugh Van Kolenberg had him on and just, I think, you know, both, epi- both episodes of yours and his have been two ones that the feedback's just been incredible for. So the gratitude side of things, I think, is something that we've, we've always said has changed our outlook on, on how things are because I suppose when you're, when you're grateful, you're thinking about what you have and not what you don't. Um, mm. And there is so much that we all, we all have. So, um, like I said, mate, that challenge of just thinking before bed in the morning of everything that went well for the day and what you're looking forward to um, is a huge one. But, um, Doctor, thank you so much for your time again, mate, and um, have a good week off and Thanks. stay safe and uh, look forward to chatting to you soon. For sure. Not eight weeks in between drinks this time, yeah? No, 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 never again. I'll chat to you soon. Thanks, mate.